do one of these. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Hamid Abassi. I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of Pluto. Uh, today I actually want to just talk about uh, blockchain from the developer perspective, from an app developer perspective. Uh, there's a lot of great um, experts here that will tell you more about blockchain, but I really just want to talk about how do we bridge the gap from today to future where uh, blockchain is universally accepted everywhere. So. Pluto, we're a payment platform that completely replaces checks and wires for growing companies, um, as opposed to, um, I, I believe a couple of people mentioned wire transfers, how and how difficult they are. We completely replace that uh, for growing companies. And our vision is really to build a financial engine for growing companies by completely eliminating the payment pain for the next generation of entrepreneurs. Uh, we were founded in 2015. We have uh, 18 employees here in Toronto, and uh, we're backed by Real Ventures, Golden Ventures, and Scale Up. Um, quick question before I move forward. A lot of people ask me where the name Pluto comes from. So does anybody want to take a crack at it and let me know what you guys think? Higher than the moon, Higher than the moon yes. Yes, OK, that's a good one. Anything else? It's not a planet. No, it's actually, um, so Pluto is based off of Plutus, which is God of Wealth, uh, but we didn't want to sound Greek because they're not very well known for handling and managing their finances as well. Um, <laughs> so apologies if you're Greek, but uh, it's just, uh, we just wanted to make it more fun. <laughs> so a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I started my career at BMO doing commercial banking. I uh, left the bank in 2010 uh, to start a gaming company called Vast Studios. Uh, we had operations in two countries, distributed our titles in 90 countries, and we were later acquired uh, in 2004. And um, just like any entrepreneur with a lot of time on their hand, I thought that I'm just going to spend two, three years just traveling and enjoying life. And I think it was the second week where I just was bored out of my mind. And I called my co-founder, and I'm saying, like, what are we going to do? What is the big problem that we now have to solve? Because uh, I just can't look at another old building. Um, and I remember that I actually was in charge of managing a lot of back office uh, processes when I was running my own company. And this is pretty much a representation of what it looked like. You know, you had your bookkeeper, accountant, or you managed that process yourself. Uh, we had vendors all around the world, suppliers, and managing that process was just a huge pain for me because I literally had to uh, go to the bank, wait in line, probably one day out of the entire week just managing this entire process. So we know that this was a big pain that we needed to address, not only for me, but for a lot of small and medium-sized businesses as well. And that's why we built Pluto, which is the easiest, most frictionless payment platform for growing companies. You can literally register with any bank, uh, bank that you uh, work with. We work with over 6,000 financial institutions in North America. Uh, we work with, uh, I know great Matt was here from Intuit, so we uh, were a big supporter of what Intuit is doing. Um, you can uh, connect your bank build your team and manage the entire back office from a financial perspective on Pluto. And uh, we have now over 50,000 uh, businesses on our platform, which we've acquired over the past two years. But the Pluto of today was completely different than what we started about two years ago. This is the first version of Pluto. It was built completely on blockchain. It was built uh, for Bitcoin users. And what we wanted to do is that we wanted to build the most innovative payment experience for our customers. And obviously, that meant that you had to use the most innovative uh, payment technology. And, and obviously, blockchain and Bitcoin was huge for us because uh, it was just so much more advanced than the existing technologies. So we started with that. But uh, after six or seven months, we ran into a couple of big challenges. And Number one, limited adoption. Every time we had to acquire a customer, we had to explain to them what that was. Beyond the uh, core early adopters, it was very difficult to communicate the value to uh, the end user. Um, transaction settlements weren't really any faster, because if you had to get funds in and out of um, your bank, it would still take two or three business days. So it really didn't offer any value. Uh, regulatory uncertainty, for us it was very difficult to set up bank accounts in different regions and countries. Um, and also, at the end of the day, businesses just wanted to get paid faster and they wanted to uh, send payments in an easy way. They didn't really care what was in the background. 
So what we did is that we had to pivot. We had to remove Bitcoin, and um, but we kept the technology. So we could actually, when Bitcoin becomes the standard, we can plug it back into uh, very uh, seamlessly. And the reason that I wanted to talk to you guys today about, because we believe that there's a missing link, that we believe that future is going to be Bitcoin and blockchain. However, there's a missing link that we need to connect today to future. And in my opinion, what that requires us to do is to clearly um, separate core banking products from financial, um, customer financial data. What that basically means is that you need to own your own financial data. And I'll explain what that means. We're a tech uh, group, so everyone's on Facebook, 1.5 billion people. Facebook is great, it does a lot of things, but it doesn't do everything. So what it, uh, let's say I wanted to post um, at a different time of the day to my followers. I use an app called Buffer. I use Facebook's uh, single sign-on to log in, bring all my information over to Buffer. Uh, I can authorize access, have all my information, prove my identity, and I don't have to go through a lengthy application process with Buffer to be able to use Facebook's features with Buffer's functionality. So it's a very simple process. Now let's say the same thing for financial services. Let's say you want it a loan or some sort of better rate on insurance. The way that you have to now do it is that you have to go through a very lengthy application process where you have to prove who you are, you have to prove your credit worthiness, and all this information is available at your bank. It's available at the bank that you're with. However, we don't share this information with third-party app providers. If this were any other industry, it would be completely unacceptable. However, we've decided to that, hey, this is the way that you know, we have to, um, that, that we're going to share our personal financial information. And different companies have different solutions, but I think the best solution that is available, um, and I think it's, it's really great for you guys to look into it, is open banking. And what that basically says, it's a mandate by the European Union that says financial data needs to be separated from financial institution. And what that means is that you can take your data provide it to whoever you want, and they can provide you the services that you need. And that is going to really change everything because it's going to take your financial information, which is currently centralized, and make it completely decentralized, which is the core principle behind blockchain. <laughs> financial institutions are getting on top of this as well. For example, Barclays, number one bank in UK, uh, just announced, I believe it's called Smart Business Solution, which is their app store where you can use your Barclay account information to get approved for many different services that they offer. And before, I know I have like one minute, I just want to quickly talk about this because I think it's really important. When Apple released the first iPhone, the only apps that you could ha um, have access to were apps that were developed by um, Apple. However, by opening that platform up to everybody, we got companies like Uber, Spotify, Square. Now, Apple could have been completely closed off and said, this is our platform, we're not sharing this data with anybody else, it's secure with us. However, by opening that up, Apple became the largest, uh, most valuable company on Earth, and I think we have the opportunity to build the same type of uh, industry here with fintech, fintech in Canada. So, summary. Blockchain is the ultimate future, but we really have to separate financial data from banking core services using open banking, um, and, and that's going to allow us to connect future, uh, um, current status to future. Canada has the potential to lead the world in this space. We are, uh, we have the talent, we have the resources, we just have to make sure that we do it. And lastly, contact your payments, um, Canada's independent board members, because they are making decisions specifically on this issue right now. So if you're building the next generation financial application, then this is very important to you, because without that data, you're not going to be able to build product for mass appeal. So they're making the change, so please contact them. And lastly, get involved, build something. This is the time, uh, the opportunity is here. And if you want to check us out, please check us out at Pluto. Thank you. All right, Questions. question time. Anybody in the audience? Wow, I was really clear.
I had a question about the, I guess, about the company. Um, do you sure. see yourself integrating blockchain in the future? As I know you started with it, you moved away from it. Are you going to go back to it? Absolutely. I think that's really the future. And, and we, like, when we made the transition, we actually kept a lot of the best practices that we learned from developing on blockchain for six or seven months. So if you look at our platform right now, we can take any financial rail and connect it to any um, financial product. So you can take an invoice uh, from QuickBooks, debit and accounts at BMO, send the funds over to Bank of America, and reconcile with uh, your vendor's uh, QuickBooks information at the other end. And this is all can be done seamlessly on our platform. And the only way that we could do that is by utilizing some of the best, uh, um, some of the best standards, basically, that we've learned on blockchain. So absolutely, we're going to go back to it, but. Banks have to be integrated because we debit and funds account on a continuous basis. So we need banks uh, to be there with us as well when we integrate it. Anyone else? At the end there. How do you see the uh, balance of power being split between centralized financial institutions and decentralized financial organizations? Great question. Um, I really think it's going to go down um, the path that already exists with utility companies. Um, I mean, if you were, not even telecommunication companies, that's another industry that you can talk about. If you look at AT&T, Apple, and let's say Spotify and the relationship that exists between all of them. I think banks have the scale. I think they have the pipes already. Um, there's an opportunity for them to allow next generation of financial products to be built on top of their existing infrastructure. I think if they don't do that and they don't evolve fast enough, there's an opportunity that they could be displaced. But I, I absolutely believe that banks are smart enough and have enough resources to make their platforms available and just make application developers build on top of them. All right, question here. Okay, thank you for taking my question once again. So I understand why you went to bed with banks. Um, my question is how can you actually reconcile the new notion that the power of a uh, fintech company with all this machine learning, AI, and so on, resides in that company owning the data. Is that clear? So can, you, can you be a little bit, are, are you asking me like? Yeah, so it, this comes from uh, your claim that Pluto uh, bites to the belief that consumers should own their own financial data. Yes. Well, it's, it's not that they should they should own the data, uh, and why that? What I mean is that you should have the freedom to share your data um, with any third-party app provider. So, if you have a bank account, let's say at Bank of Montreal, it's not Bank of Montreal's financial data; it's your financial data, it's your personal history, and you should have the right to share that with anyone you want. Let's say you find a company that provides you an amazing rate on a personal line of credit. Why should I now go through this lengthy application process with every single provider to get the personal line of credit? And I think it's your data. You should be able to share it the same way you can share your Facebook credentials and with other apps. No, no, it's your data. I mean, I, I believe that we should share that data too, right? So, I mean, it's not like Pluto's going to hold on to your customer data. We actually, if, if we lived in an environment where we could share that data, absolutely, Pluto should share your data uh, if you authorize us to uh, with other providers that can give you things that Pluto can't. Yeah. There's one at the back. All right, last question. Hey, man. Um, so I have a question. So when a lot of people think about blockchain, they think of Bitcoin and, you know, cryptocurrencies and stuff. But actually, you know, blockchain is used for anything that has to deal with trust. And so have you, as the founder of Pluto, thought about using blockchain for other use cases, for example, like um, signing contracts or, you know, other things like that? For sure. We, we absolutely do think about it. I think 
as a startup founder, you also have to consider the, the resources that you have and, and the uh, bets that you have to make in certain places. So absolutely, if, if we had unlimited resources, we would look into it, but uh, unfortunately, we have to be very calculated with where, where we deploy capital, uh, and that's just the nature of a VC-backed fintech company. All right, thanks All right, so thank much. Thank you, everybody.